Master Chef is back. I really want this. Two expert judges to decide who wins. We're looking for a great cook who can make it as a professional. Someone to turn out exceptional food under pressure. This means the world to me. I really, really hope I can go all the way. The prize to work in a top restaurant. This competition just gets tougher. Whoever wins, it's going to change their life. I'm here to win. I'm, I'm not here to go home tomorrow. Master Chef is going large. These six contestants all want to become the next star restaurant chef. But in this programme, only one winner will get through to Friday's quarter-final. They face three tough tests. They have to invent a dish from scratch. If this delivers, you're going to go a long way. They have to survive the pressure of working in a professional kitchen. Nice one, very nice, thank you. And they have to impress the judges with their own recipes. It's very brave to come on here and do this. All in just two days. All we want you to do is present us with one very nice plate of food. At the end of this, three of you are going home. 40 minutes, and we'll be tasting your food. Good luck. It's the quick elimination test. Deciding which three stay are judges John Tarode, top chef and restaurateur. All I would like to see is some clean, crisp flavours. Somebody who understands exactly what they want to do from the onset. And food writer and ingredients expert, Greg Wallace. We've got great ingredients here today. They could go starter, main course or pudding. One very good plate of food. That's all it's going to take. The contestants have 40 minutes to invent a dish and cook it from any of today's ingredients, which are haddock fillet, basil, streaky bacon, lemon, leeks, apples, peppers, tomatoes, cinnamon and raisins, parmesan, brioche and pasta. Chris, you live in Edinburgh? Yeah. And what do you do there? I'm a chemist. Ah, so you should understand how chemical reactions work. Yeah. So you've got a bit of an edge on people today, haven't you, really? Uh, some might say. <laughs> Will chemist Chris be able to concoct a good enough dish to get him to his Highland dream? I have a desire to own a restaurant in the North West Highlands. If I were to do well here, it would give me more confidence to follow my destiny. Kenyan-born Sandeep wants to showcase her wide range of cooking influences. I'd probably describe my cooking style as modern global cooking. What are you cooking for us? A sort of smoked bacon tomato sauce with the pasta. And the raisins in the cream are going to go where? That is going to go on my little brioche. We only want one dish. I fancy doing two. So tell us what you're going to cook for us, Tom. I've got the pasta going at the moment. I'm going to mix it with the pesto. I'm going to dress it with the fish on top. Do you think that a bowl of pasta with pesto sits well with a piece of fish? On top? Well, why not? Bank manager Tom is desperate to follow his real interest in life. I want to change my job and move into something that's obviously a lot more expressive. I mean, I'd love to have I don't know, my own little bistro or restaurant. You are halfway there, 20 minutes have gone. You've got 20 minutes left. Hi, Gillian. Hello. You look happy. I am, I'm working with food. <laughs> Gillian, you work for the Foreign Office. Why is it you're on MasterChef? I would love to work with food every day. I would love to get up in the morning just knowing that I was just going straight into the kitchen. Civil servant Gillian loves to try out new flavours in her food. I've got a really wide range. I like experimenting. John, you look like you're well on the way to making something interesting. It's a uh, layered bread and butter pudding with caramelised apples. Is this because you prefer to cook desserts to savoury dishes? It's the other way around. I prefer to do savoury food. I thought it's a nice chance to do something as a pudding, just something different. Widely travelled John has an international palate and hopes his love of exotic food will single him out as the winner. There's all the ingredients from around the world. I mean, I've travelled a fair bit, so I've seen a fair few. I like sort of Asian cookery. I'm sort of into sort of Lebanese things at the moment. 
You've got seven minutes left, ladies and gentlemen. Jay, you happy? Yes, thank you. Do you work? I do. I run a business from home. Oh, what, what is it? An interiors business, curtain making, aesthetics. Then you're going to have a really good idea about colour and about understanding how something should be presented. I hope so. Interior designer Jay wants to draw a close to her old career. I've been an interior designer for 11 years. I feel now I need a new challenge, hence being on MasterChef. You've got two minutes left. Come on. That's good. I like that. That's clever. That's it, guys. Your time's done. Your food should be ready, and it should be delicious. Experimental cook Gillian is playing it safe with her baked haddock wrapped in bacon with leeks and mash. The flavour's good. It's well seasoned. It's all well cooked. Leeks very soft, very nice. Then the fish is cooked perfectly. And I think that's a pretty good attempt. I'm, I'm quite pleased with that. Thank you. Bank manager Tom is hoping his self-made pesto with pasta and pan-fried haddock will get the judge's interest. You had a bit of problem with your fish, didn't you? Uh, not crisping up, just burning. It's a very, very powerful sauce. Trying to match that unsmoked haddock with pesto, it's not working. Sure. Okay. It's full of flavour from the garlic and the basil. It's just this fish on top. The fish, yeah. Messed up. Interior designer Jay has produced a plate of haddock with a tomato and pepper sauce and mash. I really like your mash. I quite like the sauce. And I don't mind the way you've cooked your fish. Okay. I think the whole thing works like a treat. I think your fish is cooked perfectly. Your mashed potato has absolutely no lumps in it and is well seasoned. I think you should be quite pleased with yourself. Good. Thank you. Exotic cook John is risking it all on a bread and butter pudding stuffed with apples and a lemon sauce. Oh, my apples aren't very well cooked, unfortunately, in there, John. Which is a shame. I would like a bit of cream with it, and I'd like the apples to be softer. But as a concept, John, I'm pretty impressed. Thank you. I look at it and I think it needs custard. Not too sticky, not over sweet. It's a shame those apples aren't soft I because agree. it's not a very pleasing texture. I do apologise. Sandeep has also gone for a bread and butter pudding. But what do the judges think of her presentation? That's the maddest, gruffiest looking pudding I've ever seen. I think it tastes really good. I'm, I'm pleased with that. The problem is, it's just shabby. Chemist Chris is hoping his simple pasta with a tomato and basil sauce will be a winning formula. This is what I would say is the sign of an extremely confident cook. I would just say I'm, I'm confident in my ability. I tell you what, Chris, if this delivers, you're going to go a long way. I like your tomato sauce, I like the basil, I like the richness of the cheese on top. I don't think the pasta's cooked enough. I don't think the pasta's cooked enough at all. Your pasta is underdone. That's the problem for me. Now, this is how it works. Three of you are going to stay with us, and three of you are going home. Off you go. <laughs> what about Gillian? The haddock was cooked very well. I think the leeks were absolutely lovely. I think that's pretty good. I hope my dish is good enough to get me through. It was all perfectly cooked. It all tasted nice. The processes are right. Wrapping the cod in bacon's right. I think Gillian is confident. Let's give her the chance. Can we move to Tom? I'm really sorry. Nobody who enters MasterChef should ever have a bowl of pasta with a chunk of fish on top, and especially serving me a piece of burnt fish. Just take the fish away. I'm not very confident at all about getting through. I realise how naive I probably am when it comes to cooking. Um, but I've enjoyed it. Tom out. How about Sandeep? It tasted great. 
it looked like nothing on earth. In terms of what they thought of my presentation, I mean, you have to laugh at these things because, you know, he did say it was a really ugly looking pudding, but it tasted fantastic. It had to be probably the ugliest massive thing I've ever seen on the plate. You've got to want to eat it. I think Sandeep should go. Let's talk about Jay then. Yeah, I think Jay's a good little cook. Our fish was cooked better than anybody's here. And the pepper sauce was great. The whole thing matched up beautifully. I was worried, obviously, that uh, I hadn't cooked things properly and my presentation wasn't good enough. But I think overall I'm, I'm really pleased. So, fingers crossed. I like her homeliness, I like her honesty, I like the reality of the food, and I actually think she delivers what she really, really believes in. Jay's in. I think so. Gillian and Jay are through. Tom and Sandeep out. So there's only one place left for either Chris or John. John? The pudding he did with the brioche and the apples was screaming out for a bowl of custard. And his apples weren't cooked properly. My apples, I'm disappointed. I did sizzle them and caramelise them first and then whacked them in the oven. I'm disappointed in those. I think the idea of the, the brioche and the raisins and the lemon sauce and the apples was a really good idea. And with a bit of help from some hot custard, it would have been awesome. What about Chris? Everybody has got their own tomato sauce recipe for pasta. His was absolutely lovely. But you have to cook your pasta right. I personally like my pasta with quite a bit of bite, but it is possibly just too underdone. There were less mistakes on Chris's plate than there were John's. You know the deal, we've got to send three of you home and three of you are going to stay with us and cook. Jay? You're cooking tomorrow. Well done. Tom? Sandeep? Sorry guys, you're leaving us. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Gillian? You're staying with us. So, John, Chris, who's going to be? John, congratulations. Sorry, Chris. Thanks very much. <laughs> I feel absolutely ecstatic. I can't believe that I've got through. Very, very pleased. I'm really, really pleased. I'm so happy. I want to be a little child. I want to stamp my feet. That's how it feels. It's elating. It's great. It's fun, challenging, terrifying all at the same time. And that last nerve-wracking moment got chosen. I'm through. I'm just over the moon. For the moment, they can relax. But tomorrow, the pressure is on as they face two more daunting tests. Very early the next morning, the contestants arrive at one of the best-known Thai restaurants in London, Yum Yum. Yum Yum's traditional Thai setting and relaxing atmosphere pulls in people from all over town. But the calm exterior hides a very busy kitchen. Hello, welcome to Yum Yum. And in charge of everyone is executive chef Ranjit Pinak, known to her staff as Took. Ready for this year? Today we're going to be really busy, so food, everything have to be perfect, yeah? The three contestants will spend the next three hours at a single station, where they will have to turn out dish after dish of perfectly cooked food. They will have to keep up with a very fast pace and meet the demands of a busy lunchtime service. John has been put in charge of one of the most popular dishes on the menu, Thai green curry, and the orders just don't stop. John, what do you do green curry, yeah? Another one coming, another one, yeah? Yes, chef. Thank you. But so far, John seems to be coping well under the pressure. Everything's happening at once. It's just the buzz. Gillian is in charge of the Tom Yum soup, a house special. It needs to be perfect every time, so Took keeps a close eye on her. Tom yum soup, mushroom, tom yum soup. Yes, chef. Thank you. It's 
it's really hot and it's really busy, um, but it's great being here. Okay. One mushroom. Oh. Thank you. Jay is working the Pad Thai station. Chef, which Pad Thai? Pad Thai chicken. One more coming. A very popular noodle dish served with either chicken, prawn or vegetables. Yeah, thank you. Pad Thai ready to serve. Thank you. So far, so good. Yeah, intense, but fun. Nice one. Very nice. Thank you. It's halfway through service and the restaurant is jammed. John's green curry orders are pouring in. How about brown green curry? But he can no longer keep up with demand. We have to speed up a little bit, yeah, getting busy. Yeah. You have to clean it up, you have to tidy it up because we don't serve it like that. Hectic, hot, non stop busy. Tom Yum ready? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Gillian's Tom Yum soups are in demand, but she's wilting under the pressure and is starting to make basic errors. I think you don't have enough soup, darling. We want Tom Yum not so fry, yeah? <laughs> Thank you. The kitchen is now at full stretch, but Jay has not slipped up once and is thriving under the pressure, producing a steady stream of perfect pad thai. Wow, you do very well. Really nice, Jay. Well done. Pad thai prawn ready to serve. The three contestants have served over 120 dishes and are exhausted. It's time for John and Greg to sit down with head chef Took to see how they got on. How did Gillian cope? Gillian, she's a little bit nervous, to be honest. She's not really, to be honest, like, no good. How about John? John has a little bit problems. I don't think he can be a good chef. I know they did crew, but it's no good. Tell me about Jay. Jay look very, very confident. Very confident. Of the three of them, who impressed you the most? Jay. I think Jay is the best. Now they're straight back to MasterChef HQ to cook their best two-course meal. Gillian came top of the class in round one with her baked haddock, but she wilted under the pressure of the pro kitchen. John's bread and butter pudding caught the judge's attention in the first round, but he struggled with the speed of the restaurant. He needs to cook the meal of his life to bring him back into the competition. Interior designer Jay sailed through the first round and excelled in the pro kitchen. Can she continue to impress and move a step closer to changing her life? Right now, you're going to cook for us your own two dishes. At this stage where you are now, only the best is good enough. You have one hour. Do it. They have to cook a two-course meal of their own design. Only one of them will win a place in Friday's quarter-final. John has decided to showcase his love of Middle Eastern food, but will he have enough skill to pull it off? John, what are you going to cook us today? Starting off with a Lebanese dish, cauliflower al shami, which is cauliflower with garlic and coriander. That's going to be served with a quick mayonnaise with some uh, lime, or lemon rather. And then for our main course? Another Lebanese thing. Three different sorts of tuna, cooked three different ways. A trio of tunas? A trio of tunas. You're either going to be a master at making flavours work together, yes, or it's going to be a cacophony of disasters. Cauliflower featuring as a starter. I think that sounds dreamy. Then he's got this tuna dish, which he is slightly confused. I wonder if he's trying too hard to get too many different flavours on the plate. Jay, you enjoyed your day in the kitchen today? Yes, I loved it. And I've, I now know that I could work in a restaurant. I didn't know for certain before, because until you've done something, you're never sure. What are you making for us? A lobster in a coconut curried sauce. Um, in the sauce are onions, tomatoes, coconut cream, saffron. And our other course is? I'm making a ginger meringue, and it's going to go um, on the pudding um, with a, a sponge base and some cherry brandy soaked into the sponge. Jay's confident that her flair as an interior designer will help her balance the big flavours in her two courses. That lobster dish is so confused. Tomato, Coconut milk, saffron, 
peppers. I don't know how it's going to hold together. Jay's pudding, meringue on the top, raspberries, there's liquor going in there. Fantastic. You're halfway through, guys. Experimental cook Gillian is hoping her inspired menu will win over the judges after her average performance in the restaurant. Gillian, what are you making for us? It's venison, I'm doing red cabbage and apple, and I'm doing parsnip and parmesan mash. And our other course is? Coconut and cardamom rice pudding. You seem very comfortable, very, very happy, very confident. Are you good enough to beat these two? If one of them beats me, then it's because they're really good. If she does that rice pudding well, it'll be absolutely fantastic. But I do have doubts. Venison, parsnips, very sweet, and then a cheesy mash. I can't envisage all those three flavours at the moment. Five minutes, that's it. It's plating up time. I am so looking forward to this. Guys, please, that is it. That is it. Gillian has made venison, parsnip and parmesan mash with cabbage and apple. Then for dessert, a cardamom flavoured rice pudding with raspberries. It tastes great. I feel it needs some sort of moisture. A piece of sticky sauce around the outside of there would just take it to that extra level. I haven't got a problem with the taste of that. I think it's good. I haven't got a problem with the way you cooked it. I think it's great. Let's take your main course and move to your dessert. Right, let's go. I love the texture. I love the creaminess. I like all the flavours that go with it. If you gave me a bucket full right now, I'd stick my head in. It is gorgeous. Are you OK? Yeah. What, what is it? What is it with you and food? I just love it. I just absolutely love everything there is. From the moment I wake up in the morning to go into bed in the evening, it's just... it's just this. Jay's lobster is in a saffron curry with rice. And she's made a raspberry and ginger meringue for dessert. But has she been able to bring together the big flavours? It's hot. It's moorish, it's moist, and the lobster is the right meat to use because it's strong enough to be able to cope with it. Okay. I like the flavours of it, I like the idea of it, and it's worked out pretty good, girl. Good. Good. I think it looks great. I feel like I've been kissed by a spice cupboard. Sweetness, saffron, chilli, it works for me. Jay? Yes. Looks like you've, you've done pretty well with the main course. Shall we now move to your dessert? Right. I really like the flavours of the raspberry and the cherry brandy together, and I like the softness of the meringue, and I like the texture of the sponge. My sponge, chocolate, raspberries, you can taste that alcohol in there. Very good meringue. It is an absolute delight. Do you think that you have it in you to win MasterChef? I really, truly believe I do. OK. John has made a Lebanese cauliflower starter, but failed to produce the mayonnaise to go with it. His main is a trio of tunas with butter bean mash, roasted cherry tomatoes and mange too. I'm afraid the mayonnaise I was going to make wouldn't happen. The egg yolk wouldn't turn into oil. It's moist. Cleansing, I think it's absolutely delicious. It's also very brave to come on here and do this. I think the idea of it is excellent. I think you've flavoured it really, really well. I would have loved to have seen the mayonnaise, and I think it would have taken to a very different height. Say goodbye to Mr Collie. Say hello to Mr Tuna. That's great. Sweetness is smarter first. The butter bean is inoffensive as a flavour. The tuna comes in after us as well. Strong, fresh, divine. Thank you. Absolutely divine. I really admire all the work you put in here. I really do. I think the ideas are great. Some of this tuna can have some more seasoning on it. It's good. It's good. It's just right now, for me, a very, very confused main course. Right. And I think it's a real shame. 
Because at the moment, I see some promise in you, John. At the end of this, we will have one quarter finalist, and unfortunately, two of you will be going home. Go away, have a cup of tea. Ta da. I think Gillian's food is good. The venison dish with the cabbage and the parsnip, great concept, but it needed something else to take it to that next level. And somebody who wants to be a quarterfinalist has to be able to do that. It would mean absolutely everything to go through. To, to be able to go in there and, and, and do that all over again, yeah, in a heartbeat. I've never seen a rice pudding served up in a dollop on a plate. I don't think at the moment she's got much of an idea how to make her food look saleable. The first to go has got to be Gillian. I completely agree with you. Jay, now I enjoyed her food more than anybody's. I love that lobster. Nice crunch and texture, sweetness, saffron. It works for me. I thought my lobster had a wow factor, so I hope it's enough to get me through. She has the food that looks the most like accomplished restaurant dishes. But I see great promise in John. There is somebody who is able to cook a starter with a cauliflower. That's pretty game. There's not enough in it. The mayonnaise may have lifted it. It's something you'd eat at home, it's not something you'd buy. I was pleased today with the starter of the cauliflower. It is an absolutely delicious, Moorish, can't stop eating it type starter. I honestly believe the work he put into the dish of his tuna main course was extraordinary. Although individually, really, really nice. Really, really nice. Don't come together as a whole plate of food. So he's got lots to work on. So who's it going to be? Unfortunately, we're going to lose two of you and we will have a quarterfinalist. For two of you, this is where your journey ends. And for one of you, possibly the start of a wonderful experience. Our winner, our quarter-finalist, Jay. Congratulations, good on you. Of course I'm disappointed. It would have been great to go through but Jay's a really good cook. You should better go on and win it now. I'm disappointed for myself. I mean, I'd love to be going through. I gave it my best shot, and Jay's the one for them. So, good on her. I'm just over the moon, elated. I can't believe it. I really can't. It's just incredible. I believe I've got this far that, yeah, I can go all the way. I know this gets tough. Well, I'm going to give it my best shot, so, yeah, go for it. We've got more traffic on this plate than Oxford Street. How did you ever believe that was going to get you through to a quarter-final of Master? <laughs> you now understand why people start dancing after dessert. Eww. You must try very hard not to make your plate look like a pile of sick. 